deep underground, many secrets are often kept away from the public eye. Whether that's for military or security reasons, or for reasons we simply do not know, buried right below us has always been a fascinating place. So from one of the UK's most haunted locations under Edinburgh, to Hitler's Berlin underworld, here are five hidden and mysterious underground locations. As always, sit back and enjoy. Shell Grotto Margate. The Shell Grotto is a curious underground structure located in Grotto Hill Margate in the UK. Over the years, it's been the subject of much speculation as to why it was built and what purpose it served, but even today, it's still a complete mystery. It was first discovered back in 1835, when it was alleged a capstone was disturbed and a worker's spade fell through a gap. To retrieve the spade, a small boy called Joshua, who is the son of James Newlove, the local schoolmaster, was lowered through the hole and the enchanting grotto was discovered. Newlove, realizing its potential, purchased the land, installed an entrance, and opened the grotto to the public in 1837. The grotto consists of twisting passageways around 2.4 meters in height and 21 meters in length, leading to a rectangle room known as the altar chamber. The walls and roof are covered with shell mosaics of various designs, some of geometric and some star and sun shapes. All are painstakingly created using locally sourced shells, including mussels, cockles, limpets, whelks, oysters, and scallops. The exception to these is the flat winkle, which is used as a background between designs, which must have been collected from somewhere else in the UK. What's incredible about the grotto is it would have been created before electric light, and so the work would have to have been done by gaslight or candle, making it even more of an impressive feat and yet its purpose is completely unknown. It's been estimated the construction could have been over 3,000 years ago, and theories on what it is range from a rich man's folly, a prehistoric astronomical calendar, to some connection to the Knights Templar. A truly fascinating underground location that not many, especially UK residents, know about. Metro 2, Russia. Metro 2 is the rumored secret underground metro system that runs along Moscow's public Metro 1. The underground railway is said to consist of four lines that lie 200 meters below the streets of Moscow. They are believed to connect the Kremlin, the Federal Security Service, Terminal 2 at Vinokovo Airport, and an entire underground town in the district of Ramaniki. The mysterious railway dates back to the reign of Joseph Stalin and the KGB, and the KGB codenamed it D6. Reports of it first came to light in 1992, when a novel was released about a story that centered on a subterranean bunker under the streets of Moscow. An idea the author Vladimir Gonik claimed was inspired by a real location known as Metro 2. Gonik maintained that over a 20 year period, while he worked at the Poly Clinic of the Ministry of Defense, he had learned about top secret bunkers connected by railways. He claimed these railways were constructed for the former leaders of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and their families. Now, many have dismissed Gonick's claims as a publicity stunt to sell his novel. However, there is some evidence that he is telling the truth. In 2014, Vladimir Shevchenko, a former advisor to Presidents Mikhail Kobyshev, Boris Yeltsin, and Vladimir Putin, appeared to confirm the existence of a secret Moscow Metro. However, he did state that some reports were greatly exaggerated, but explained that Stalin was very afraid of being assassinated and that there was a single track underground railway line running from the Kremlin to his then second home. In 2008, Shevchenko again raised speculation about a secret underground railway when he said, Currently, the Kremlin subway cannot be called a transportation artery, and as far as I know, for its continued operation, it requires major repairs. For among other things, there are a lot of underground utilities which will eventually decay. In addition to Shevchenko's comments, some KGB defectors have spoken of a network of railways and other infrastructure deep beneath the streets of Moscow. But for now, it seems no one is prepared to confirm or deny the existence of Metro 2, 
Although seeing as there are rumours of similar underground systems across the world, it doesn't at all seem far-fetched to say that there could be some truth to this. Japanese Navy Underground Headquarters During World War II, Japanese naval forces in Okinawa built an intricate underground headquarters under a hill in Tomigazuku. The base had hundreds of meters of connecting tunnels, and it was constructed to outlast aerial bombardment and sheltered 4,000 civilians and troops. Towards the end of World War II, Okinawa was the site of one of the world's bloodiest battles when US forces invaded the occupied land. The Japanese troops were led by Rear Admiral Minoru Ota, and the battle took the lives of over 200,000 people, with over half of them being Japanese citizens who had been drafted into fight without proper provisions or weapons. The brutal campaign ended in June 1945 when the Japanese were overpowered by US forces. Japanese propaganda at the time encouraged locals to commit suicide rather than face capture and possible torture at the hands of the United States. Consequently, whole families decided to take their own lives in their homes, with husbands killing their wives and children before killing themselves. Rear Admiral Ota and his men retreated to the underground base, and Ota sent a farewell telegram in which he commended the Okinawa people's self-sacrifice and cooperation during the battle. Then Ota, along with his men, committed suicide in the tunnels to avoid surrender. After the war, the remains of over 2,000 Japanese soldiers and civilians were recovered. Many had retreated into the tunnels and committed suicide there as the enemy closed in. The base was then sealed up and left untouched for many years. Then in 1970, it was unsealed and 300 meters of the tunnels are now open to the public, including the officers' quarters where Ota and his staff committed suicide. The walls inside are riddled with shrapnel and the farewell message left by Ota is still clearly visible. Born as a man, nothing fulfills my life more than to die in the name of the Emperor. Also scrawled on the wall in Japanese is destroy the ugly Americans. Blast marks from those who chose hand grenades as a means to end their life are also noticeable on the walls throughout the tunnels. Today, the eerie underground location stands as a testament to the horrors of war, and visitors are welcome in the hope that future generations might understand the tragedy war involves, and invite prayers for lasting world peace. Edinburgh Vaults Edinburgh has been recognised as the capital of Scotland since the 15th century, and this beautiful city has a rich yet haunting history. Today it's the hub of Scotland's tourist industry, second only to London as the most visited place in the United Kingdom. Over the years, the city has grown from little more than an overcrowded single street to the city it is today, dominated by the Edinburgh Castle. But to facilitate Edinburgh's rapid growth, two bridges were built, and it's the South Bridge that is the site of the infamous Edinburgh Vaults. The bridge was completed in 1788, and is constructed with 19 arches, although nowadays all but one of the arches is completely enclosed behind buildings, with only the largest arch still visible. However, it's what lies beneath these arches that is interesting and unique. They contain a series of chambers and buildings, most with their own separate entrances. For around 30 years after the construction of the bridge, these underground tunnels became the homes of some of the most impoverished, villainous residents of Edinburgh, as well as housing taverns, various tradesmen, and storage for a range of illicit materials. Prostitution, poverty, violence, and illness consume the vaults, and it's also alleged that body snatchers turned serial killers, Burke and Hare, also stored their victims down there. The conditions and the air quality in the vaults was atrocious, and the tradesmen started to leave the area, leaving behind the wretched and poor, who either died or left themselves. By around 1820, the vaults lay empty and largely forgotten, and at some point, tons of rubble was dumped into them, making them inaccessible. It wasn't until 1985, while excavation work was being carried out, that the vaults were rediscovered and the full extent of life in them was exposed. Today, part of the vaults are a tourist attraction and festival venue, but with their squadron and troubled past, paranormal investigators believe they are one of the most haunted locations in the world. 
The spirits of the poor souls who lived there apparently still roam the corridors, in particular, a ghost known as Mr. Boots. An evil man who supposedly murdered a woman and kept her body in his house within the vaults. There is also supposedly a small child who holds hands with visitors to the vaults and tugs at their clothes and many more creepy stories. I'd be interested to know if any of you have visited them and the vibes you got whilst down there. Berlin's Underground City During World War II, Berlin was virtually destroyed by bombing raids and fires and when Germany eventually admitted defeat in 1945, in the years that followed, many of the buildings that had remained were demolished, and all signs of the Nazi regime removed. Over the years, many of the historical monuments have been reconstructed. Today, Berlin is one of the most sophisticated places in Europe, and home to a thriving tourist industry. Recognised for its festivities, distinct architecture, modern arts, and high standard of living, but directly beneath this bustling city lies a labyrinth of underground bunkers and tunnels, a place that over 60 years ago was the refuge for the residents of Berlin to shelter from the relentless air raids during World War II. And although most are now empty, some furniture, cots and rickety tables still exist, a chilling reminder of the families who spent time there. For many years, these bunkers were forgotten, but in 1997, a organization was formed known as Berliner Unterwalten, translated to Berlin Underworlds, a group who set about exploring the underground world lurking beneath Berlin. What they have discovered is a vast maze of bunkers and tunnels, some built by Hitler's architect Albert Speer, as part of his failed Germania project. There are still eerie Nazi symbols in some of the bunkers, and the remains of a Messerschmitt factory beneath the now defunct Tempelhof airport. Some of the larger bunkers were destroyed by the Allies during and after the war, and the so-called Führer bunker, where Hitler spent his last days, is now mostly destroyed and sealed off from the public. But it's estimated that there are over 600 other bunker complexes that still exist, although most are flooded and inaccessible. The most obvious one is incorporated into Gressenbrunnen subway station, where the original door to the bunker still survives, and where the tour starts from. Although, unless you're aware of the history, many pass the door completely unaware of the world that lies beneath it. The work the Berlin Underworlds do in keeping these bunkers alive is not always met with approval by its residents. The Nazi period is a time Germany would like to forget, and these bunkers and the tourists that now visit them are a reminder of Germany's dark history, a virtual time capsule of a past Berliners would rather forget. Before ending this video on underground locations, this video is somewhat of a collaboration. As you will know, I do not usually promote anything on this channel. It's not that we don't get offers, because we do. I just never promote anything that wouldn't bring you any use or enjoyment. So when 20 Stories Down approached me and asked if I could mention their new comic, it only took one look to know that many of you would love to read something like this. And I myself am not a comic reader, but genuinely got lost in thought reading the first episode. There is just something about comics, the layout and the drawings is just so nostalgic, and 20 stories down is awesome. Set in crumbling Roman tunnels and ancient chambers beneath the city of London. I won't give much away, because by just looking at the art, I'm sure you'll want to find out more. But it's the story of a man on a quest to find a lost, fabled library and the dark knowledge it holds. So go check it out and let them know what you think, the link will be in the description. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.